Hello, everyone. It's Charlton. So I started out by looking at this uh, news story that Mueller is um, wants to question the Cambridge Analytical Analytica director Brittany Kaiser. Don't know her. I know Cambridge Analytica. I didn't even follow that story that closely when it was all going on. I vaguely understand the the idea. Bannon was a part of it. I think he was a vice president there. The Mercers were investors in Cambridge Analytica. Even though it's uh, it's in the UK. And that's where my brain focused, okay? Because um, if I could just quickly back up to, I think, my last video about Paul Manafort and his meeting in the Havana room of, a, of the building that, a couple blocks from the Trump Tower which is also a building owned by uh, Jared Kushner's father. He met with some dude, uh, Konstantin Kilimnik. I think he's Russian or Ukrainian, whatever. He has ties to Russian intelligence, even though. And he's been indicted, but he's, um, I don't know where he is, to be honest with you. He'll probably never, ever see a U.S. courtroom. But at that meeting, supposedly, Manafort, and I think Gates was there too, handed over polling data, polling data from from the Trump campaign, and my theory was because I'm. This is all about. This is all about. Um, this is all about what I, I believe that that Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump conspired to fix the 2016 election, and they they you know they probably did it with the assistance of the Russians, but they did it by working together because the only way you can fix a fight is by having. The loser take a dive. You cannot fix a fight. You cannot rig a fight by having the winner do the opposite of taking a dive. There's no such thing as doing that. So, um, you know, and all this Russia collusion from the very beginning, which Trump has basically been at every opportunity trying to make it look like he's suspicious and working with the Russians because it's all designed to direct your attention away from what I just said, that what was really going on was the two campaigns were working together, and the Clinton campaign and the Trump campaign through conduits, and 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 one of one of them, one of them I was suggesting yesterday, one way they may be communicated was in that meeting. I think it's August second at the Havana Room, Paul Manafort after Trump has secured the nomination. Okay. Paul Manafort initially came on to the campaign. He was only there for a very brief time, but he initially came on to be some kind of delegate manager to manage the uh, the Republican National Convention process and to be to, to to put his expertise there. Which, by the way, the the RNC also was hacked, but it was never used. And um, you know, it wouldn't shock me if somebody somebody at the RNC is in on this too. Whatever. I mean, it just starts to get crazy. Sound crazy, but it's not. So, but he went from being that role to being, the, you know, the campaign chairman, you know, but only for a couple months. So in August, uh, in August, I think it was August 2nd, he met with this guy and he gave the polling data. And what I was suggesting that is that it was basically a roadmap. It was a roadmap from the Trump people to the Hillary people of where Trump whatever, the districts and states where they were going to focus in their campaign and, and focus their resources and where they wanted the Hillary people not to focus, you know. And that's not just um, where they were going to put their people, but also where they were going to advertise, where their social media campaigns were going to focus, etc. You know, and it would all be about districts and states that they needed to win and that they needed the can Hillary campaign to lose, which... I've said it a thousand times. The only way she could have lost this election is by doing it on purpose. The only way. The only way. And uh, she's playing this day. If you don't want to believe it, it's because you don't want to believe it. You know? She could have spent her whole campaign herself never leaving the state of Florida and chosen somebody from whatever, you know, uh, from Michigan, and the race is over. And that person just, and to, for her VP, and that person just does nothing but campaign in Michigan. And it's done. So, but when I saw this story, you know, about uh, the Cambridge Analytica director, Brittany Kreis Kaiser, who 
I think, supposedly met with uh, Julian Assange, WikiLeaks, after the election, you know. Um, and there's EU stuff going on here. I'm not here to talk about that. What this made me think is, you know, that um, basically you had, it was Cambridge Analytica, want two things. Cambridge Analytica, you know, um, it's, based, it's based in London, in the, in the UK. So I found that very odd because, you know, what's his name is, is in London, you know? Uh, this guy, the, uh, the former British intelligence agent from MI6, you know, who came up with the dossier. He, he's in London. He's based in London. He was employed by Fusion G, uh, GPS, you know, and that you could track that back to what's his name? The dude from uh, Glenn, I forget his name. But the Hillary campaign supposedly, you know, employed Fusion GPS, which employed this, this individual, Chris, uh, uh, Christopher Steele, who's a former intelligence agent uh, for, 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 from British intelligence and whose expertise is, you know, Russia, to come up with this dossier. But in my opinion, that was all, you know, it was all just, it's just a farce. And that I think it's very possible that, you know, um, this individual or somebody who uh, was a go-between between between this individual and 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 Cambridge Analytica as a way for the two campaigns to coordinate, you know, and coordinate their campaigns, especially, you know, their their social media campaigns, which obviously Cambridge Analytica, Analytica was deeply involved in, which you know, which begs to reason why why wasn't the Hillary campaign using methods like Cambridge Analytica? Because to, to the best of my knowledge, the Obama people were, I and mean, that's part of why Obama won so handily in two thousand and eight is the tide had turned. And these things happen in politics. You have these seismic shifts. I mean, it happened with talk radio with the Republican Party. When things change from Democrat, where just where one party seemingly is ahead of the other party technologically, and, they, and it just gives them this edge for like five, eight, ten years. And the Obama people, the Democratic Party, kind of was that way, and things had turned because, you know, the Internet had changed everything and, and the Republicans were still li living in like the radio cable news era. So, you know, it just begs the reason why didn't the uh, why didn't the Hillary? Why wasn't the Hillary campaign using methods like Cambridge Analytica? And it's because because they didn't want to win. But it doesn't. But it's it, there's many things going on here. And, uh, you know, it just is a huge coincidence to me that Cambridge Analytica is based in London. And so is Christopher Steele. I mean, like, that, you know, so, but that just got me looking, and um, it didn't take long before I realized that uh, Cambridge Analytica is um, the parent company of Cambridge Analytica. And to the best of my knowledge, Cambridge Analytica has been shut down. But Cambridge Analytica, uh, the parent company, is a company called Strategic Communications Laboratories, all right, which is also based in London. And the, uh, the, uh, the CEO of of this company in London, Strategic Communications Laboratories, is Nigel Oakes. And so um, I just managed to search him just quickly. And sure enough, here he is, Nigel Oakes, the CEO of Strategic Communication Laboratories, based in London, which whose subsidiary is Cambridge Analytica, deeply implicated in the Trump campaign. Here he is presenting at the U.S. State Department in um, May of uh, 2012, when Hillary Clinton is still the Secretary of State at the State Department. It's about six, mo six months before she left. Now, I haven't even listened to this. You know, and does this prove anything? Not absolutely, but it's just hilarious that the exactly what I'm thinking, and sure enough, boom, it takes about two seconds to find that, okay? You know, like I said, if you don't want to believe it, you don't want to believe it. And uh, that's the story there, dude. That is the story there, baby. All right, thanks for watching my videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like down below. Smash that like button, and I'll see you in the next video. Later, man.